Welcome to The Doctor Will Hear You Now, a podcast featuring our physicians and other healthcare providers telling their stories, sharing glimpses into their daily work and mission, and showing what it means to practice medicine just a little bit differently. Healing you means hearing you. Let's talk. I'm Lexi. And I'm Ben. And today we're discussing our Lady of the Lake Health's groundbreaking partnership with LSU. First announced in early 2022, this is one of the largest investments for the state's health in Louisiana history. And this is much more than your typical sports sponsorship deal. Our Lady of the Lake has committed $170 million over the next 10 years to work with LSU to set a new standard for healthcare delivery, sports medicine, research, and education. It impacts students and what they'll be learning. It impacts student athletes and their performance. And it ultimately impacts healthcare across the state. Through this unprecedented level of investment, we've established Our Lady of the Lake as LSU's exclusive championship health partner. To talk more about this partnership and what it means for LSU, what it means for our state, we've invited Dr. Catherine O'Neill, who is the Chief Medical Officer of Our Lady of the Lake Regional Medical Center and an Associate Professor of Clinical Medicine, Infectious Disease at LSU Health Sciences Center. Hi, Dr. O'Neill. Welcome. Thank you for being on the podcast today. Hi, Lexi and Ben. Thank you for having me. Of course. We're so excited to connect with you um, and just learn more about this opportunity. But we'll start just, I guess, with the basics. Can you just tell us a little bit about what you do and your sense of your role in our healthcare system, as well as a partnership with LSU? Sure, absolutely. I'm, I have the best job. I'm an infectious disease doctor as my core education and what I practice in the, in the practice of medicine every day, which is super fun. Infectious diseases are everywhere. They're all around us and they, they interrupt everybody's lives. I got a text message this morning from a colleague saying, why is my daycare closed? What is happening in the community today, right? And it's just viruses. But because of that, I feel like I get to interact with the most diverse population of patients, which makes my job really rewarding. Way back when, before COVID, I was also the medical director of infection control here at the hospital. And what you do then is you do a lot of safety work just trying to keep the people who don't come in with infections safe from getting infections and the people who do come in with infections from spreading those infections. And so through a lot of patient safety work with Our Lady of the Lake in that role, over a course of about 10 years, I learned a lot about the way the hospital works, how we connect people, how we connect people over, over the patient and, uh, and keep the patient at our center so that we do the best job every day. And through that work, I ultimately um, took the role of the chief medical officer, which is really just taking all of our physician groups in the hospital and getting them to work together to help patient care move better, faster, and more efficiently, and ultimately what's better for the patient to get them out of the hospital as quickly as possible. So that's, that's sort of my day job, which is awesome. And my background a little bit with LSU, I, uh, I graduated from the main campus in Baton Rouge a long time ago. And then I went to medical school in New Orleans. I met my husband there. We went to Vanderbilt for our training, for our subspecialty training, and then came back to practice with our residency program here. So I teach medical school students and residents as well when I'm seeing patients, which is, um, which is also super fun because they keep you on your toes. I bet. Well, glad you came back to the state and came back to, to be with us. We are too. So I guess give us an idea then what, what that typical day looks like for you, sort of juggling between your work with the lake and, and LSU. Yeah, it, it's easy to, well, not easy, but it's siloable. So I have a clinic every Tuesday, but on the other days of the week, I don't have clinic. So I got here this morning. I prepped for some meetings. I've had several meetings in a row this morning, some with physicians talking about how do we make our place of work a little bit better. That's what I focused on this morning. A couple of setting up some meetings coming up. Um, so administrative duties, you know, and, and those are kind of tasks. Otherwise, I'm not assigned and assigned. Two weeks ago, I was on call, though. So for seven days, I spent my days just seeing patients upstairs in the hospital, high ICU patients, patients who had just had surgery. All those patients end up coming to my clinic later as discharge follow-ups. So sometimes I'm just seeing patients. Sometimes I'm doing admin. Sometimes I'm toggling both a little bit. Yeah, that sounds like a busy day or weeks or months for you. Do you like having the mix of both the administration and then the patient care too? Yes, I do. I think that it's my only true time to interact. I have rounded as an administrator up on the floor and with patients, 
popping in saying, how's it going? That is a very difficult question for people in the middle of their day, you know, and unless they're really ready to unload and have a cup of coffee, sometimes you don't know how it's going. But when I'm seeing a patient with you, when, you know, Miss Jackie calls me at 10 p.m. with a consult, I know what her day is really like. And I can ask a little bit more because now we're sharing an experience together. So I've really worked hard to make sure I maintain that, not not only because I love seeing patients, but because the only way to really interact with our team and understand what their day's like is to share a little bit of their day. And that's easiest through patient care. Definitely. Well, I guess we can dive into kind of yeah. our main our main topic here, the LSU partnership. There's multiple components to it. And so we'd really like to talk through each one of them separately, if that works for you. And great. We can start with what we're doing with LSU Athletics. Can you tell us a little bit about how Our Lady of the Lake is supporting student athletes and their health and wellness? Yes. So our relationship with LSU Athletics is unique because they are a unique patient population. The first part of it's the simple part, the part that everybody understands. Athletics needs a clinic. The clinic needs to be as convenient as possible to them. So at the Our Lady of the Lake Athletics Clinic on campus now is in two locations, in football ops and in the Broussard training facility where a lot of athletes come through every day and that's located in the football stadium. So we have two clinics with x-rays and um, the ability to draw labs and the ability to get some medications through our pharmacy there. So really, we're just providing access like we do for all patients. Very simple, easy The other part of it, though, is that athletes stress their bodies more than I ever understood. I'm not an elite athlete, never claim to be. And watching the health care that they go through in the year, when you put your body through such rigorous training through the year is, is really unbelievable. And then asking them to get back to health when they've been ill is something that's different from you and I. We may spend several weeks kind of saying, hey, you know, I didn't go running the last couple of weeks because I was sick two weeks ago. And they need to be back on the field as quickly as possible. So they push their body to recovery. All of those things are very interesting to us because if I go upstairs right now on the sixth floor, I'm going to find a variety of people who just had an orthopedic surgery. And they are in a variety of states of health. And I need to also get them back to their lives as quickly as possible. And so by really diving into the best practice for the most energetic about getting back to health, we can then take those lessons learned and expand them to the population who really need them, which is my 63-year-old, lost some muscle mass, fell at home, injured their knee, came in for a knee surgery. And if I ever want them to bend down on the floor and then get back up in their house on their own, we really need to understand what what return to play is and what makes a difference in return to play. And so we're, we're sort of taking our patient care model and adding our inquisitive look, which is our academic look at how can we take the lessons learned and then apply them to a bigger population. And, and that's research. So we research all of our patient populations and we take our lessons learned for future patients. And we're doing that with athletics in the, in the space of musculoskeletal injuries. That is pretty fascinating. Well, can you give maybe a little bit of an, an example of some of that research work when it pertains to the student athlete? Yep. It's a little bit boring, Ben, because we, this relationship is a year old and in academics, nothing moves fast. I just have to be honest. So the first thing you do is you say, all right, who are our patients? And you take a look at your patients and you say, do I have all the data for my patients? Because we've just put this new clinic system in, we're, we're trying to decide what are all the data elements that you capture on an athlete. For an athlete, if I don't capture their sleep, if I don't capture their nutrition intake, then I don't know if was it their surgery or was it really all of these other factors that play into their recovery. We know upstairs from our adult patients that nutrition is a huge key to, to healing. What we don't know is if it's the same key at 23 years old. And so we've spent our first year in athletics just looking at our ability to capture all the data we need. Where are those data sets? Do we have permission to use them? We talk to the athletes about, is this going to benefit you? Do you want to participate in this? You don't have to. It's okay. We're happy to just take care of you and you not become a participant in the discovery and research process. And so really laying that foundation is something that's very, very important. One of um, my husband and I's mentors at Vanderbilt, Richard Light, sort of the father of plural fluid studies. Again, sounds boring. He's a fascinating man. 
but he spent the first 10 years of his career laying the foundation of capturing the data so that he could then teach us over the next 30, how do we actually diagnose people's pleural diseases? And his name is in every textbook I ever read on pleural diseases, but but that first couple of years is just the putting their foundation of how you're going to gather the information together in order to make really big discoveries later. So we're still in that foundation building. And it's been a really good process because it allows for a lot of team building with a team that we weren't involved with, with before, which is athletics. That's awesome. Thanks for walking us through that. And I guess we can shift gears a little bit, not just to student athletes, but to students overall. And how a big part of our partnership with LSU is truly changing the way healthcare is delivered to a university, the university student population. Can you tell us a little more about how we're supporting the LSU Student Health Center and describe the work that we are doing there? Right. So in many ways, it mirrors athletics. In some ways, it's different. The first thing we're doing, because at our core, we provide patient care. We provide exceptional patient care. So we are um, giving the same access we give to anybody in the community to healthcare to students, whether they are insured, uninsured, underinsured, which is really this big grab bag of, I mean, I have some insurance, but it doesn't really help me get to the doctor, right? I don't want to use it. And so we're making sure that we can bring them in and that they feel safe in that environment because it's really important when you are a young person to start learning about your health. We know in one of our health system goals, is making our population healthier over time. And we know right now in Louisiana, our patient population is not healthy. Our health outcomes are fairly poor across the state. And so as a health system, what are we going to do to make sure we're not tackling the same issues in our 50 and 60 year olds 30 years from now that we're tackling today? And so one of the reasons that we're so interested in providing really, really easy access to this population of students who we can then continue to follow. We have hospitals in Lafayette. We have hospitals in Monroe. We have hospitals in Jackson, Mississippi. We can offer health care for anybody who stays in the state of Louisiana and, and start to see, did, did our impact in allowing them to start to receive pre- good preventative care, good knowledge about their long-term health care options, did that impact their overall health in 20, 30 years? If we can do that, that means that as opposed to me, when I was 20, I was not using my health insurance. I didn't even go to the dentist for probably a good six years of my life, right? Just absolutely didn't. What was that impact that that had on my later health? We don't know that right now. We assume we're healthy in our 20s. And now I think that we have more and more evidence to know that if we don't impact our health early, it has a detrimental yeah. impact later. So so that, that's a big part of the student health clinic. The other big part that I think is worth mentioning is mental health. So we do know that our country has been under a lot of stress. That stress is translated to some really big mental health issues amongst all age groups. And the, the time to talk about mental health and to learn about life skills that help you with mental health is the first day that you can say, I'm concerned about my mental health, right? And the biggest stressor that you can have in your life is moving and entering into a new population with new stresses. That's college for many people. And so the ability to wrap our mental health services around the LSU student population and help them get through this huge part of their physical health, but also their mental health changes in their early 20s is something that we're very focused on and very happy to continue to provide for those students. Definitely. That's great to hear. I know college is such a transitional time for so many people and lots of things are changing and you're learning about yourself and figuring out what you want. So it's great to hear that they'll have that support. So on in that same vein, I guess, what do you see as the benefit for the student population to have a health system like Our Lady of the Lake working with the Student Health Center and how's that maybe changing their experience when they need to go to that doctor's appointment at the health center? Right. So we hope it changes their experience in a couple of ways. Number one, I hope that if you wake up with an earache, in your dorm room, you don't call your mom in Eunice and say, hey, I need to go to see Dr. So-and-so. And and it's going to take me two and a half hours and have class. It'll probably be Saturday morning. We hope that you say, I'm going to walk down the street. We hope that you pull up your phone on your MyChart, which is something we've been able to offer our students now and say, I'd like a video visit. I'm not even going to leave my room. That's access. And we want to be able to provide that access where the student is because we know that that will get them back in the game. I want them to stay in the class. I don't want them to miss an appointment. I don't want them to have to drive home. 
So immediate access is something that they haven't had, especially through our telehealth services, and they'll have in an improved way. We're also offering pharmacy services on campus. So they don't have to leave campus for so many students who don't have a car, don't have transportation. The ability to have um, drop-off pharmacy services on campus will allow them to feel a little bit more secure in the health care that they deliver. One thing we don't talk about in medicine very often is what happens when you switch doctors. And I actually had a conversation with a patient yesterday about how frustrated that they were that when they transitioned their care, we lose that long-term knowledge of, you know, how did you get here today? Lots of people have made lots of decisions over the years, and you got to tell your story again. It's so frustrating. Our ability to keep your records in Epic, and they follow you the rest of your life through every transition, is amazing. And it keeps you from being frustrated. It also allows for better health care because the provider that catches you after you leave college, you start your grad school degree, you may go to Hopkins for grad school. They have Epic. And I see and share patients with Hopkins every day, and we communicate through our medical record system. So by providing this powerful tool on campus the minute that you start accessing healthcare as an adult, we've allowed you to have safer healthcare through the rest of your life. And so a combination of lots of things, some immediate, and then some that even though they don't feel the immediate benefit, they will feel as they progress in their healthcare journey, I think will be very beneficial. Yeah, that's awesome. I guess another part of this partnership with LSU is also that academic and research side. So we talked a little bit about how we're having an impact on LSU athletics and on LSU student population. But can you share how we're working with LSU to improve research and academics and what this really means for the future of healthcare in our communities? Absolutely. So we talked about how our healthcare outcomes in Louisiana are not quite where we want them to be, right? And honestly, they're just not where we want them to be. And so how do you improve the healthcare of millions of lives over time? And you do that by studying those lives and the impact that different changes have on them. A healthcare system like Our Lady of the Lake doesn't contain social scientists. They don't contain a variety of statisticians. They don't contain process engineers. We borrow and collaborate with those disciplines on main campus and have been for the last 10 years through our partnership with the Health Sciences Center and our early partnerships with main campus. What we want to do is go deeper in those relationships and collaborations now. We have so much knowledge about patients' social situations, about how their health care has been affected by their social situations. We have so many people who could study those and understand the impact that changes in adding a highway, adding some food safety into a neighborhood, adding a vaccination campaign. How do those impact our patient population? But to do that, and many universities already have, but in Louisiana, we have not paired our academicians with our healthcare institution well. And so we hope that this partnership will allow us to go deeper into those discoveries all the way from I invented a new drug on campus at the chemistry lab, and it's going to make its way to the bedside of my patient. We, we know that those things are happening. We want to escalate that delivery of new drug therapies to our patients through this partnership to studying the impact of the changes we're making in Louisiana today and how they impact our patients. And can we actively change those things as they're happening for the better? Interesting. Well, and then from the patient side of things, if, if they're in a hospital, they might not just be seeing their physician, they might be seeing a physician in training. That's right. So I guess what's that look like from the patient side? Of, do you know? How do you explain it to them? Right, right. So we've had learners in this hospital for a long time. We pair with multiple nursing schools, CRNA schools, radiology tech schools. We are such a big a uh, wonderful mixture of great diseases that anybody who's training a future healthcare professional wants to train at Our Lady of the Lake. Your students are going to see so many wonderful things that will prepare them for the future. So as a patient, when you enter the doors, you will meet learners. Most of our patients, and through several educational surveys, we know that patients re- really enjoy an academic environment because they get seen more. So the more learners you have, the more people come into your room to say, do you need me to help you get up out of bed? Did you not get your access to your call bell? Let me move your TV closer to you. Each time a learner enters, you have another interaction with somebody who can help you. And so patients tend to be more satisfied in the learning environment because the number of people they see through the day is increased. And our learners are very eager to 
get to know our patients. That's their job. They're learning about this for the first time. They spend a lot of time with our patients. I've had learners go and buy a Subway sandwich for a patient. I've caught learners cutting up salads for my patients, you know, because they're they're immersed. And I, I really want to learn from you. How can I help you? Because the patient's helping the learner so much. They're such a valuable part of what they're doing there that they feel like they want to give back. And that's a very rewarding relationship that I wish more people had the opportunity to see. But we can tell from our patient surveys and multiple academic surveys over time that that is what the patient experience is, is, is just a lot of great care. Great. And then I guess on the flip side of that, you know, we're talking about what the patient might see at Our Lady of the Lake, but what with this partnership, what the student might see at LSU from the lake. I know part of this partnership is the uh, interdisciplinary science building. Mm-hmm. Yes, could you call it about that? Yep. So we, we were able to support the building of the interdisciplinary science building through a gift that will allow it to have our name, the Our Lady of the Lake Health Interdisciplinary Science Building. What that student will really experience, though, besides walking into a building with a name, is our partnership through rotations, through access. I was lecturing over on main campus the other day with a pre-med group. We have lots of students I have two rotating with me this summer. So these are undergraduates who just want to look inside the hospital. They have some tour buses who come in and park here every several weeks and unload a whole bunch of undergraduates who are saying, I love science. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it. And so we give them experiential learning in the hospital. They spend some time in the lab. They spend some time in the ER. They spend some time watching some CT scans getting done to say, oh, I didn't even know this existed, right? Had I known all of the things in healthcare existed when I was growing up, would I have picked up to be a physician? We have a lot of cool jobs in here that are not what I do every day. Now, I love my job, but the more we open people who are interested in science's eyes to the multitude of jobs in the institution, the more we give them options. And so through some of our coursework with the undergraduate campus, we've been able to um, to show them those options early and help steer their path in the right direction. Exciting to see that come together for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. a great opportunity. I wish they had that when I was at LSU. That yeah. sounds like a great thing yeah. for students to be a part of. You may have still ended up in the same place, right? But I don't even know that our our undergraduates in the arts understand how big of a role the arts and communications play in the hospital. We have music Definitely. therapists in our hospital. How do you know that there's a music therapy program, you know, and what they what they actually do for our patients? So phenomenal start to that relationship. And I hope that it only deepens over time. Definitely yeah. agree. Having been involved in this partnership as it got off the ground, and then now we're more than a year mm-hmm. into the partnership, what's that experience been like for you to watch it come into fruition and what have you learned from it? That's a great question, Ben. You know, every new every new partnership comes with a lot of lessons learned. Just meeting new people, meeting new people with new skill sets, uh, learning from them, opening your eyes to some of the things that uh, you think are just normal. And then they say, well, can we do this differently? We can do this differently here and in multiple other clinics. Right. So I think that, that that's been a big learning part for me. I spend most of my time in the hospital and I have my own clinic, but haven't spent as much time in our other Our Lady of the Lake clinics. And so that's been really interesting for me is just learning the process of setting up a clinic and getting to know our outpatient clinical team a little bit better. I think from the LSU perspective, I have worked for LSU for a long time as a teacher for the medical school, but I've not spent as much time with the main campus. And I missed that. At Vanderbilt, we, we walked across main campus to eat. We interacted with them daily. We had great research sessions. If I had a new idea, I could put together a forum of people interested in that idea and have that, coll- that collaboration. And I miss that. And now we have it back. And it's so exciting to be able to, uh, to talk to people who have similar interests but are doing a little bit of a different slant on it. And so all of those things this year have been exciting very fast paced, very much also just getting the nuts and bolts of the partnership down. But it's going to be a rewarding next several years as we allow more of that kind of of fun learning to occur for all of our clinicians. Speaking of next year and what's to come, what is next for our partnership? What can the LSU community expect and the state expect to see in the future from Our Lady of the Lakes work with LSU? 
I think that some of the first things you'll see coming out in the next year is how we roll out some of the research dollars and in partnership with LSU, pick some of the topics that we feel will be most impactful to the people of Louisiana in terms of their health and what we'll we'll choose to study together to make healthcare outcomes better. Um, So that is definitely in our immediate next 12 months is starting that process of um, research dollar granting to individuals. What they'll also see and what I really look forward to seeing because I'm a small town kid is I look forward to seeing my niece graduate um, with an epic chart and move to Lafayette and establish care with a doc there. And then, and they say, oh my goodness, I knew your doctor at the Student Health Center and I see your notes and I'm so glad to meet you today. We don't have to spend time re-getting to know what prescriptions you've been on and what labs you had. We don't have to reorder tests that you've already had, that she will be caught by a healthcare provider who's really adequately prepared to see her. That, that's a really exciting win for people. And I look forward to watching that make its way through our state. That's great. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about this. Uh, I'd imagine people that are listening to this podcast may be familiar with you already because they've seen you sort of publicly speaking on behalf of the lake during the pandemic and sharing information at that time. Now with the LSU partnership, you're kind of taking on another public role in sharing information about our work with LSU. Wanted you to maybe share a little bit about lessons you've learned through that process or advice you might have, specifically when it comes to leadership during a tough time or leadership with such a big public facing project? (laughs) They are different. The lessons I learned in COVID were definitely a different type of leadership skill that I hope that you don't have to pull out of your pocket often, right? It was a make decisions and explain them and circulate those decisions as widely as possible. And then tomorrow we'll make a new decision. That is not what we do in medicine often. I sit down with patients for a long period of time, anticipate what they'll go through, talk about what the next six to eight months will be like for their illness, walk them through that process. And so all of us having to pivot to a day-to-day decision-making, explain it tomorrow, I'll explain it again was something very new to me, but I knew how to communicate. And communication is always absolutely the fundamental thing that you need to do well if you're going to get a group behind you, right? Is just tell them why. Be honest about it. And with this partnership, we had to do the same thing. We're in the middle of a lot of financial upheaval in the healthcare system right now. It is not an easy time to be providing healthcare with the cost of labor and the cost of supplies in the country. And we still chose to invest now. And as our healthcare workers are saying, I'm not even sure if we're financially secure. How could you go through this process? They really questioned us. And I felt like I was on the same COVID rounds. Let me go through the whole hospital and just stop and give out some candy and say, do you have a question about LSU? Do you have a hard question for me? Please ask me. And we did that with, do you have a question about masks? If you have a hard question about masks, ask me. I mean, I have the answer. And I'll tell you if I don't, but I'll tell you why we made these decisions, what's in the back of our minds so you can, so you could hear us. And a lot of our employees ask those difficult questions. Why are you investing money when we feel like we're not financially secure? And our answer was, we have to be financially secure in 100 years. Our Lady of Lake is 100 years old this year. And how did we get here? By making really, really good choices about anticipating what the future will be like. Our future will not look good if we can't get a health population to our front doors. We expend so much energy on people in the last, and energy and money and resources in the last years of their life because they're unhealthy. And so how how do we take that down a notch? How do we help them be healthier earlier through preventative care? That's what this partnership is about at its core. And we have to do that. Or otherwise, in 100 years, we'll say, where did we go wrong? What what should we have thought about? I hope we're right, but that was the decision behind it. And and what I've learned in, in our COVID pandemic and what I hope I've taken, um, not just with this partnership, but everything we do in the hospital going forward is it's so easy to just get out there and talk about it. So we're doing today. If we just continue to have a great open dialogue with all of our partners and all of our team members, we're going to make great things happen. That's right. Thank you for sharing that experience and for your leadership during 
all of those turbulent times and continue today. We'll shift gears a little bit and hopefully dive into maybe a fun question. We ask all of our listeners this and it's become my favorite question because I just like to know what what people are kind of digging into. And so what are you listening to these days? It can be fun related, professional, both, whatever you want to share. What am I listening to these days? So, you know, my family listens to a lot of music and I have two teenage girls and an 11 year old son. And so our playlist is extensive, but right now it has a lot of Taylor Swift. So when you say listen, I think music immediately because we are listening to a lot of Taylor Swift and oddly a lot of 70s because my son is in this like 70s kick. From a, I garden a lot and I do a lot of outside work on the weekend and I'm listening to two different sets of podcasts. The first is American History Tellers. I finished most of the seasons of American Scandal over the last two years, which were fascinating. And then I started listening to American History Tellers, which I've just found unbelievably interesting. You know, knowing where we've come from is very important in understanding where we're going. And there's not never enough history in our lives to help inform us. So I've been really, really, really enjoying those podcasts. But this past weekend, I listened to a podcast called Against the Odds. And it's a series of seasons, very historical. But the first one I listened to was about Amelia Earhart. And she was a wow. social worker, which I didn't know before. She, she learned how to be a pilot, but her parents lost all their money in the Great Depression. And she became a social worker for children in a children's home and then started flying again. So really interesting stuff. And that's what's been in my earbuds lately. Wow. Thanks for sharing that. I'm definitely going to add those to my list. So I'm a history uh, yeah. nerd and I'm always looking for good podcasts. Yeah, I'm just writing those down myself yeah. <laughs> in my notes. Okay, well, I guess before we wrap up, was there anything else we missed, I guess specifically with the LSU conversation that you'd want to make sure gets heard and mentioned? You know, we did talk about team member resilience, and that is something that our LSU partnership, I think, will help with. This state is incredibly proud of its flagship university. And sometimes in healthcare, we get a little low. It's a hard job. The daily grind of people who are ill is, is a difficult one to cope with. And so we bring a lot of spirit into our organization. We bring a lot of teaming into our organization. And when you say team and you say Louisiana, there is only one team, right? <laughs> That's our football team or our women's basketball team right now. And the ability to pair that through this relationship is a gift. It is a gift that we want our team members to feel. So we recently took care of an athlete in the ER and he tweeted about our team and he mentioned the nurse who took care of him and said, you know, I'm just so thankful for the care that they provided. That is the kind of feedback that makes you proud because this has always been your team and makes you proud because we have a great team here. So I, that is a benefit to this partnership that we weren't sure we would, we would see. But man, our team is so excited about the benefit that we bring to the community every day. And I think that being able to shine that light through what makes us super proud, which is our um, our athletics teams are just a fun, a fun fact, but something that I hope that each team member feels a little bit too. For sure, for sure. And it, I guess it's worth noting, you know, for the state too, the, the benefit that this will have over time economically to have sort of this hub of research, medical academics, healthcare, the downstream benefits financially and also in the talent pool. We leave, people leave because we don't offer these opportunities. And I mean, you know, Louisiana, as much as I do, we don't want to leave. Nobody cooks like us. Nobody has our mom down the road. But, but our talent leaves this state because they are looking for these opportunities that we have got to put back together so that our talent stays in the state or even better, leave and go get even a secondary and, and tertiary education, but come back because we have a place to land that will allow you to continue to really foster a great medical education and research education at the same time. That is, that it would be just an amazing benefit of this partnership. And I really think that we will see it. Definitely. Well, thank you, Dr. O'Neill, so much for joining us and for your leadership and fostering this partnership. We really appreciate your time and chatting with us. Thank you, Lexi. Thank you, Ben. Uh, thanks, team, who's putting the podcast together. I really appreciate it. It was very fun. 
And listeners, thank you for tuning in. We'll have everything Dr. O'Neill mentioned and other helpful resources linked in the show notes. And we'll be back soon with more episodes of The Doctor Will Hear You Now, a podcast from Franciscan Missionaries of Our Lady Health System. And if you have ideas for topics you'd like to hear on the show, please email us at podcast at fmolhs.org. Thanks for listening. Go Tigers. Go Tigers. <laughs>